Welcome to Orange Weekly, presented by Krause Health. Alongside Nate Mink, I'm Brent Dax. Coming up, Syracuse head coach Dino Babers said the Orange had to look in the mirror a little bit during its bye week, and the Orange get ready to take on a very young NC State team in prime time. Nate, first, Syracuse comes off the bye week here, three and two, probably not the record that most people thought they would have at this point, but they are who they are. And as Dino Baber said, during the bye week, you want to get better and you want to get healthy. Well, we'll see if they got better starting with NC State Thursday night. The question is, did they get healthy? That, that remains to be seen, Brent. You know, Dino at his press conference earlier in the week did not sound optimistic. Any of those guys who had missed the previous couple games are going to be back in time for Thursday night. Andre Sisko, Ife Melifonwu, McKinley Williams has been out since early August. Doubtful he might be able to go on Thursday night, and Sam Heckel has been out since the second quarter of the Liberty game. So I don't know how healthy they got. One guy who we presume is healthy enough to play is Tommy DeVito. All indications are he's going to be able to go. Uh, how he performs this week is going to be another matter because NC State brings a physical defense, and if they hit him in that spot that caused him discomfort last week, uh, that can be a game changer. I think all those names that you brought up are important, and you don't want that list to get too long on defense. But Heckle is the key to me. This is an offensive line that's been in transition. It's an offensive line that has really struggled so far. And you brought it up, Nate. Now that you're starting to see these really physical, aggressive ACC defenses, starting with NC State, I think that line has to stabilize as best as it can. But Heckle's injury has been one that's been kind of a toss-up in discussion since he got it earlier this season. Well, not only that, you talk about stability. You know, Dino intimated that you might see a, a sixth lineman maybe join that rotation. You know, Pat Davis played most of the fourth quarter against Holy Cross, it wouldn't shock me if he becomes a third tackle that rotates in with Carlos Vettorello and Ryan Alexander on Thursday night either. You brought up Tommy DeVito. We thought it would be a big question mark after he left in the fourth quarter of the Holy Cross game, but this week, Dino, Tommy himself, said he's good to go. There was a little debate about whether Tommy should have been in that game or not with Syracuse up 38 points, but we're past that now, and he is going to play in this game. So I guess I'll just rephrase that question the way they put it. Is he really good to go at this point? That's the big question. I, I, I think as, as good as he's going to be. I mean, listen, I don't think many players in the country at this time of year are, are going to be 100%. Again, I think he's going to be able to go. I think he did get a lot of ample rest over the last week and a half. Uh, but again, if he gets hit in the wrong spot on Thursday night, uh, there's, that's not to say that discomfort may not return and, and impact his ability to throw the ball downfield. I would say Dave Doran, the NC State head coach, studied that film pretty closely. But, Nate, the interesting thing with this Tommy DeVito situation is it was a non-contact injury. So whatever that soft spot is, it was not a football injury. NC State, though, I think has other ideas here. So Tommy and this team come into this NC State game. They start a full-time ACC play. Of course, they've got one game in the books against Clemson. And, Nate, I'm kind of that like shoulder shrug emoji guy when it comes to the ACC. We have no idea. This league is wide open. So is that good news or is it bad news for Syracuse? The word I've been using is, is hodgepodge because I, th I think that's what it is. You look at the remaining uh, seven games on this schedule, five of them have three wins right now. Uh, Pitt has four, and Wake Forest is sitting at 5-0 and right now. So, yeah, I think this next four-game stretch is really going to reveal a lot about this team. And, and I'll say this, Brent, I think, you know, if Syracuse is going to have the type of season they all envisioned having at the beginning of the year, you have to beat North Carolina State. This is a team and an offense in mass transition right now. Again, you, you, you have a strong kicking game. You have a strong defense. It's going to come down to the offense to avoid those turnovers on the road and, and score. I mean, this is a, this is a game you must win if you have designs of, of replicating last year's success. And speaking of bye week, Syracuse is going to get another one halfway through its ACC schedule coming up. Well, at the start of league play arriving and a bye week over for the Orange, Syracuse head coach Dino Babers quoted Michael Jackson when it came to what the Orange did in their week off. It's time for Syracuse Sound Bites.
Nate, Syracuse faces one of the youngest teams in college football Thursday night with the NC State quarterback. It's on the road, ESPN, the whole country will be watching. So the Orange are set up in prime time here. What kind of game do you think we're going to see against the Wolfpack? The question is how, how long will the country be watching? Because I think we're in store for maybe something akin to an offensive maelstrom. I, I think, you know, both offenses clearly are, are, are still looking to get up to speed a little bit. NC State in, in particular went through a, a quarterback crisis in their off week. They're going to start Bailey Hawkman, uh, Florida State transfer quarterback, but they've had uh, Ricky Person, their starting tailback, has been injured early in the year. They obviously had mass defections on the offensive line, quarterback Ryan Finley, receivers Jacoby Myers, Kelvin Harmon. They've really been in a state of flux. They lost their OC, which actually might be one of the more significant losses on that side of the ball for them. Uh, and Syracuse, you know, as we touched on earlier, uh, still finding its sea legs a little bit with the offensive line. Uh, we'll see uh, if Tommy can stay, you know, relatively intact throughout the course of the game and can push the ball downfield. But I think we're, we're in store for a low scoring game. I think it's both defenses are clearly ahead of, off, of the offenses at this point in the I season. I watched that Florida State NC State game. And while Florida State won that game pretty handily, that defense got to Florida State quarterback Alex Hornerbrook eight times. I think they're going to come after Tommy DeVito with everything they have. And I agree with you, Nate. I think this is going to be an ugly, low scoring, physical football game. I'm going to go Syracuse squeaking it out 20 to 17. What do you see? Syracuse wins 23-20. So we're in that same same range again. And, and again, I think, you know, Syracuse, they have to stop the run. You know, NC State has two freshman tailbacks who can go. So they got to be diligent in, in their run gaps and their run assignments. And then in the end of the day, I think the kicking game is going to be a huge factor in this game. And I give that edge, obviously, like I would most of the season to Syracuse with punter Sterling Hoffrichter. Sterling Hoffrichter kicked a field goal against Holy Cross, too. So who knows? You can see him on the field doing that as well. That's this week's episode of Orange Weekly presented by Krause Health. For Nate Mink, I'm Brent Axe. We'll talk to you next time.